Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ilarian Garbazo with you and today we'll talk on survival analysis. We'll uh, do some theoretical part and some coding as you like it. But before this, push the like button, crash the like button, subscribe to my channel and comment to this video. So let's talk about it together. Survival analysis is a branch of statistics for analyzing the expected duration of uh, time until one or more events happen, such as uh, death in a biological organism and uh, failure in mechanical systems. This topic is called reliability theory or reliability analysis in engineering, uh, duration analysis or duration modeling in economics, and event history analysis in uh, sociology. Survival analysis attempts to answer certain questions such as uh, what is the proportion of a population uh, which will uh, survive past a certain time, of uh, those that survive and uh, what rate will they die or fail, can multiple causes of death or failure be taken into account, how do particular circumstances or characteristics increase or decrease the uh, probability of survival. To answer such questions, uh, it is uh, necessary to define a lifetime. In the case of biological survival, uh, death is exact, but for mechanical reliability, uh, failure uh, may not be well defined, for uh, there may uh, well be mechanical systems in which failure is partial, a matter of uh, degree or not otherwise uh, localized in time. Even in biological problems, uh, some events, uh, for example heart attack or other uh, organ failure, may have the same uh, ambiguity. The uh, theory outlined below assumes well-defined events at specific times. Other cases may be uh, better treated by models which explicitly account for ambitious uh, events. More generally, survival analysis involves uh, the modeling of uh, time to event data. In this context, death or failure is considered an event in the survival analysis uh, literature. Traditionally, only a single event occurs for each subject, after which the organism or mechanism is uh, dead or broken. Recurring event or repeated event models relax that uh, assumption. The study of recurring events is relevant in uh, systems, reliability, and in many areas of social sciences and medical uh, research. The following uh, terms are commonly used in survival analysis. Event, uh, death, disease occurrence, disease recurrence, recovery, or other uh, experience of interest time the time from beginning of an observation uh, period such as uh, surgery or beginning treatment to an event or end of the study or uh, loss of contact or withdrawal from the uh, study uh, censoring uh, observation if a subject doesn't have an event during the observation time they are described as censored the subject is censored in the sense that nothing is observed or known about that subject after the time of uh, censoring. A censored subject may or may not have an event after the end of observation time. Survival function uh, as the probability that a subject survives longer than time uh, t. Censoring uh, is a form of uh, missing a data problem in which time to event is not observed for reasons such as termination of study before all uh, recruited subjects have uh, shown the event of interest or the subject has left the study prior to experiencing an event. Censoring is uh, common in survival analysis. If only the lower limit is uh, known, this is called right censoring. Right censoring uh, will occur, uh, for example, for those subjects whose uh, birth date is known but uh, who are still uh, alive when they are lost to follow up or even the study ends. We generally encounter right censored data if uh, the event of interest has already uh, happened before the subject is included in the study uh, but is uh, not known when it occurred. The data is said to be less censored. When it can only be said that the event uh, happened between uh, two observations or examinations, this is intolerant censoring. Left censoring occurs, for example, when a permanent uh, tooth has already emerged prior to the 
start of a dental study that aims to estimate its emergence uh, distribution. In the same uh, study, an emergence uh, time is interval uh, centered when the permanent tooth is present in uh, the mouth at the current examination, but not uh, yet at the previous examination. Internal uh, interval uh, censoring often occurs in HIV studies. Indeed, time to HIV uh, carrier conversion uh, can be determined only by a laboratory assessment, which is usually initiated after a visit to the physician. Uh, then uh, one can only conclude that uh, HIV uh, seroconversion has happened between two uh, examinations. The same is true for the diagnosis of AIDS, which is based on clinical symptoms and needs uh, to be uh, conferred by a uh, medical uh, examination. It may also happen uh, that subjects with a lifetime less than some threshold may not be observed at all. This is called truncation. Not that truncation is different from a left centering. Uh, since for a left sensor uh, datum we uh, know the subject exists, but for a truncated datum we uh, may be uh, completely unaware of the subject. Truncation is uh, also common. In a so-called uh, delayed entry study, subjects are not observed at all until they have reached a certain age. For example, uh, people may not be observed until they have uh, reached uh, the age to enter school. Any diseased subjects in the school age group would be unknown. Left truncated data are common in actuarial uh, work for life insurance and uh, pensions. Left sensory data can occur when a person's survival time becomes incomplete on the left side of the follow-up period for uh, the person. For example, in an uh, epidemiological uh, example, we may uh, monitor a patient for an uh, infectious disorder starting from the time when he or she is tested positive for the infection. Although we may uh, know the right hand uh, side of the duration of interest, we may uh, never know the exact time of exposure to the infectious agent. Okay, as we know the theory, uh, let's uh, investigate the Lifelines library in Python. I found this awesome implementation of survival analysis at uh, Anurag code at the GitHub. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, see how can we implement it in Python. So the quick implementation, uh, we would uh, import pandas SPD for uh, frames, uh, numpy, uh, numpy SNP uh, linear algebra, matplotlib for plotting, seaborn for plotting, and uh, there is a special library called uh, Lifelines uh, for implementation of survival analysis. First of all, uh, let's start with um, uh, fixtures data. So we've got example data, it's uh, durations and event observed, 0 or 1, survived not. So we would create an object, uh, it's like a fitter uh, with the fit method, so we import uh, the data in the fitter, durations, event observed, and uh, we can uh, get a label, kaplan Mayer estimate, and uh, create an estimate and plot it. So here it is, it uh, is called survival curve, so it means uh, as the timeline um, at the time uh, line, for example, 4, there is a 50% chance to survive. So uh, let's do the real world example. Uh, we will be using uh, Telco customer churn uh, data from Kaggle. Uh, there is a Telco customer churn uh, data um, at kaggle.com. So we are creating a data frame with pandas. Uh, read CSV method. Uh, so let's have a first look at data with a df.head. So we've got customer ID, Ganda, senior citizen. Uh, remember, it's uh, uh, te uh, telecom uh, company data. So senior citizen, partner, dependents, tenure, uh, phone service, multiple lines, internet service, online security, many others, device protection, tax support. It's a binary data, for, uh, yes or no, false or true, zero one, uh, streaming TV, uh, streaming movies, contract, paperless billing, payment method, multi charges, total charges, and charm. Charm, uh, it's a label for us. 
So let's see uh, the data types with uh, df.info, the partners method. So we've got uh, the data types, float, uh, integer, object. Uh, so next step, we take the total charges and convert it to numeric. Uh, replace yes and no in the charm column to one and zero, one for the event and zero for uh, sensor data. Uh, we are doing it applying the lambda function. After converting the column total charges to numeric, uh, we've got, uh, we can see the info on this uh, data frame. Here it is. Uh, input the null value uh, with the median value, fill na value equals uh, median, in place equals true. Create a list of uh, categorical columns. So uh, for i uh, in df columns, where the d type is object. Removing custom ID column, uh, cause uh, custom ID has been removed because it's unique for all the rows and we got no uh, additional data in it, uh, initial uh, knowledge from it, uh, our model wouldn't have. Let's have a look at the categories and the distribution in all the categorical columns. So uh, here it is for E in uh, different columns print the column name and value counts on it. So for the gender, it's like equal, for the partner, like equal. It's not in equal for the dependents. It's not equal at distribution. Uh, font service and many, many others. I would uh, leave you a link and you can see it by your own. Now, uh, the point, let's create an overall compliant mail curve. It's, it would be, uh, first of all, overall, without breaking into, uh, into groups of covariates. So we're using uh, the lifelines library and uh, using Kaplan mail, uh, mail fitter. It's so simple, guys. So uh, the uh, tenure column is the time to event data of censored and event data and uh, the label is churn, it has a churn one or zero, survive or not. Uh, so we are, are creating a, a fitter, a couple of ma uh, fitter, fits the data into uh, the model, so durations, event observed, and uh, create an estimate, plot it, and uh, here it is, so we see the overall uh, survival curve. Our next step would be creating, uh, dividing it uh, to cohort, for uh, cohorts. So we've got the Kaplan method uh, from the Life Science Library, uh, time to event, and event occurred or censored. And uh, we can create the cohorts from the contract, uh, for example, for the contract column. So we've got different cohorts, month to month, two year, one year feed the cohort one uh, data, then uh, feed the cohort two data, feed the cohort three data, uh, and plot uh, the survival curve for different cohorts. So you see uh, like for different cohorts, we've got a different survival curve. In, uh, this, uh, in this data for uh, telecom, and we can do the same for different cohorts. For example, we can take streaming TV column and uh, it's a binary, yes or no. Uh, so people subscribe to streaming TV, uh, at the telecom operator or not subscribed. And we can uh, feed the model for first, uh, for first cohort, uh, feed it for the second cohort and uh, plot uh, the um, uh, survival curve. And we can see that uh, the people that who are uh, not subscribed uh, got the low survival curve, and the people that uh, who are subscribed to the streaming TV are very important um, to uh, more uh, are very important to the telecom operator, and the telecom operator, uh, if 
the telecom uh, uh, operator wants to low uh, the churn rate. Uh, it's important uh, to develop the streaming TV for its users and to, uh, that users and uh, that users uh, can subscribe to the streaming TV in uh, the telecom operator uh, application. So the next question is: uh, We've got all the data uh, from the telecom operator, and we want to know uh, what columns, uh, what features uh, influence most on churn rate. So here it is. So we've got the Lifelines library, and from the Lifelines library, we got a, a Cox proportional hazard model. Uh, it's called Cox uh, Proportional Hazard Fitter and uh, we can uh, take these columns uh, that we are interested in uh, for example uh, Kenta, Partner, Dependence, Phone Service, Monthly Charges, Senior Citizen, Streaming TV and uh, see the uh, influence on the uh, churn rate okay so uh, first of all we need to create uh, dummy variables from uh, the yes or no uh, from the binary data and then we can uh, use cox pro uh, proportional hazard model just uh, take the fit uh, fit it uh, to the data uh, df dummy tenure as a uh, time and a chan as a label and see the summary and uh, Cox Fitter would give us the dash dashboard on it, the summary. So uh, all the coefficients, uh, the log likelihood, uh, all the summary on the data, uh, p-value, and a lot of data on uh, uh, a lot of uh, must-have summary on the data. And after that, we can uh, just plot it and see the influence and the co uh, coefficients. Uh, uh, so, streaming TV is very important. Uh, font service is very important. And the Ganda uh, mail is not important at all. It's like the coefficient is zero. So you can check all the methods and attributes as associated with the Cox proportional uh, hazard model object. So they got a lot of methods and a lot of uh, you can take from this. So what's next? Ah, and uh, awesome things that we can take from the Cox proportional hazard model is that we can see the survival uh, curve on the uh, clients on the rows um, level. So we take the Cox proportional predict survival function with the, uh, the rows with, uh, that we are interested in, like uh, these rows from 5 to 10 and uh, other rows uh, that we choose. So, uh, and then plot it, and we would see on the client's uh, level uh, the survival curve. And it's very important for companies to see this uh, survival curve on the client's level, because there are a lot of imp very important clients. And, uh, for example, you want to know uh, would uh, our contract with this client uh, last for 40, 40 days? So here it is for the client 9, it would last with a 60% um, chance. And so on. So that is all for now in the survival uh, analysis uh, video. Don't forget to push the like button, to don't forget to crash the like button, don't forget to comment the video, don't forget to ask your, uh, your questions and don't forget to subscribe to my video channel on data science and some other topics in future.